This new feature from Google Gemini is going to change the way that we all use large language models. That's not hyperbole. I'm not exaggerating. This isn't clickbait. This is the future of how we will all use large language models. And it should have been like this from the beginning. All right. So I'm going to get into and, and tell you what this new feature from Google Gemini is. And you're going to learn why that this is an area that you need to be focusing time on. And even if you're not using Google Gemini now, you should start using it so you can get used to using this because uh, this is how you're ultimately going to grow your company and grow your career. Uh, so if you're new here, that's exactly what Everyday AI is all about. So my name is Jordan. I'm the creator and host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast and free daily newsletter helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI to grow their companies, grow their careers. All right. So uh, most days, uh, almost every single day, we do what's called an AI in five, put it out on, on YouTube, sometimes LinkedIn. So make sure you're following us there and let me know what else you want to see. All right. So let's just jump into it and show you this new feature. And then we're going to talk about why this is the future of large language models. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and run a very simple prompt. All right. And if you follow uh, Everyday AI at all, you know, I'm not a big fan of Google Gemini. It has a problem uh, with hallucinations. It has a problem with accessing real-time info, which is what Google's known for. However, this one new feature alone, I think is really worth now you paying attention to Google Gemini. All right. So this, how we've been working with these, you know, uh, chat GPT and Gemini and Anthropic Cloud and, and, and Pi and all these other AI chats, that's not how humans work, right? So if I'm in this simple prompt, again, I'm just doing this for, um, to explain, you know, I said, write a blog post about the difference between large language models and small language models. So here's what usually happens. Either you take this and use it and you go in and edit it yourself, um, or you just keep going back and forth because you're like, oh, this isn't right. And then you'll write a prompt and you'll say, hey, keep all these things the same. However, make this, you know, section about small language models more about this. All right. Here, this new feature is going to save us some time. So let's just go ahead and do uh, one quick example here. All right, so here um, about small language models. So it's talking about speed and resource efficiency, low cost, focus expertise. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this opening paragraph, right? And let's just say I want this opening paragraph to talk more about um, energy savings and uh, the compute cost of running edge AI. I don't see it, you know, talking about edge AI. And that's the big, um, you know, kind of the, the big name or the big... Um, you know, keyword that we might want to rank for, for writing a blog post about small language models and large language models. So all I have to do is highlight this, right? And then you'll see this new button pop up here that says modify selected text. This is great. All right. So now all I have to do is say, um, and again, I'm just doing this as an example, y'all. This isn't how I actually prompt. I'm going to say, uh, this is good, but let's please add uh, more info about edge AI and the cost savings about uh, small language models uh, running locally versus large language models and their cloud compute. All right, and I'm gonna hit enter. And now you'll see that Gemini is actually working this in, working my updates in to this actual output. So it's not changing the rest of the output, right? Um, so you'll see here, once it's done, it should be here in, in just a second. Um, there we go. So now it just added all of this information that I wanted to, right? So I wanted it to talk um, a little bit more about Edge AI. I wanted, uh, so, so now we have some references to Edge AI, you know, talking about the cost savings um, on cloud compute. Now it's all there. So I didn't have to reprompt this, you know, and start from zero. And you'll see everything above and everything below remain the same. So this is a great new feature. Essentially, all you have to do is highlight any text look for the kind of wand edit arrow and go ahead and edit. Um, I will tell you, I am on Gemini Enterprise. I've tried this on normal Gemini Advance and whatever they're calling Gemini Plus now, uh, nowadays. So uh, most all users should have access to this. Let me know if you don't. All right, now let me just quickly tell you, this isn't anything new, but I've been telling, like I've been saying this, like this is a huge miss for large language models because our team, we've been using the GPT technology for like, I don't know, almost three and a half, four years now, right? So since, uh, you know, Jarvis now called Jasper. So this is uh, what we have now inside uh, Jasper. So 
we've had this capability in third-party programs, but none of the big language models, ChatGPT, Gemini, uh, Claude from Anthropic, Pi, et cetera, none of them have really allowed you to edit and document. And that is how humans work, right? So a lot of people waste so much time going back and forth, trying to get the output just right, or they might actually spend more time taking their output, putting it in a document and rewriting it. So this is huge, but we've had this sort of functionality for years because, you know, here in, in Jasper, um, I just have an old document about, uh, you know, mid journey and runway. I can, in the middle of a document, just say, write a paragraph, you know, so here it is right now I'm talking about, write a paragraph about how photorealistic AI imagery has become. And so we've always had this ability in other third-party programs uh, to uh, kind of edit within the document. And if I'm being honest, this is going to be a problem, I think, for a lot of companies like your Jasper, Copy AI, all these other great uh, softwares um, and, and really unicorns, right? Like Jasper is a unicorn. I think this is going to be problematic for them because this is one of the main reasons, even for us internally, that we still even use these programs is the ability to edit in document because that's how we all work, right? Um, and I do think that we're going to be seeing this soon from the other big companies because again, this is the future of how we're all going to work with large language models is you work in document, right? So uh, there's been kind of uh, rumors here. I'm showing it on the screen here but, uh, so far of at least future um, updates to chat GPT, uh, you know, alleged, right? That you can at least in document change the model. So presumably we will probably be seeing this um, in open AI, whether we have to wait for, uh, you know, GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, uh, we're not sure of, but I do think that in the coming months, um, I, I won't even say, you know, quarters because I do expect, uh, you know, open AI and Anthropic uh, to be working this into some of their future updates. All right. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for that free daily newsletter, join us for our daily tutorials, and let me know in the comments, are you going to be using this? And do you think this is the future of how we're all using large language models? Let me know. We'll see you back for another AI in five. Thanks, y'all.